Impeccable, meaning of behavior, performance, or appearance in accordance with the highest standards of propriety. Faultless. That is exactly what I think of Disney's Wreck-It Ralph. Oh yes, and uh, greetings, it is I, Rockotar. Upon my most recent rewatch of Wreck-It Ralph, I discovered that the movie is not only as good as I remembered it being, but in fact, much, 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 much better. I actually now believe Wreck-It Ralph to be one of Disney's very best movies, and dare I say, even one of the greatest animated movies ever made. Now how exactly has it come to achieve that rank? Well, just sit back and relax as I explain why Wreck-It Ralph is an impeccably perfect movie. Before the plot can even begin to happen, before Ralph even shows up on screen, the movie has already secured its place as one of the most creative and unique Disney movies. As the normal Disney animation logo at the beginning is replaced with an 8-bit version and an accompanying tune. Now that doesn't really have anything to do with the plot, but I thought it was a great example of how much attention to detail and care was put into this movie. Actually, let me also quickfire a few other non-plot related elements that are very nice as well, but because they don't impact the plot, I won't be mentioning them later. Great comedy. Ralph's design. Felix's design. Penelope's design. Actually, pretty much everyone's design. The creative and unique setting. The detail of the Nicelanders having a low frame rate. The many well-integrated and surprisingly unintrusive references to gaming, including my personal favorite with the code for the Sugar Rush Vault. Good animation. And the movie actually justifies being an animated movie as well with its unique setting. Decent music score. Etc. Oh, and also, I just wanted to thank all you guys who watched my previous videos and subscribed. You guys really mean a lot to me. Just want to let you know that. Without further ado, I present to you the S-tier plot of Wreck-It Ralph. Just seconds into the movie, Ralph is an instantly engaging character. His intro narration is pretty chill and relatable. It tells us everything we need to know in a clever, unique, and engaging way. Ralph, being someone who does his job perfectly, but gets no respect or love despite it, is such a perfect idea for a character, and connecting all that to a world filled with flawed misconceptions and stereotypes is even more genius. As we will soon find out, Ralph's role in his game is actually very, very important. But unfortunately, Ralph has been led to believe otherwise by his own game's characters. A few moments later, Ralph drops the bomb on the other villains, that he isn't actually happy and wants to be a hero instead of a villain. The other villains attempt to explain why he is wrong, but Ralph isn't exactly very receptive. And also I should mention that M. Bison brings up something about going turbo, a brief hint for later, of course. Now, the villains in this meeting may sound ridiculous, and the scene is played mostly for comedy. However, that is actually the writer's clever trick to throw you off. That way, you won't realize all the villains are actually completely correct about everything they just said to Ralph. Their main advice being to accept both who you are and your unique place in the world, because you are just important as everyone else, and that there is no one else who can do the same things you can. Make sure to take note of this scene. Acceptance is, in fact, the main theme of this movie, and it ties into every character's personal arc. The villains end the meeting with a surprisingly important and emotional affirmation speech about how being a bad guy isn't actually a bad thing, and that they are proud of who they are. Also make sure to keep note of this scene as well. You know, I might even say this first villain meeting scene is the most important in the film. The only problem with saying that is that you could say that about just about any scene in this movie. Every scene in this movie is so intricately woven together, like a beautiful tapestry. Too poetic? Ultimately, Ralph doesn't really respond much to the other villain's advice, but, I mean, who would really just immediately take the advice of a bunch of acquaintances who you probably just met anyway? Another seemingly small scene worth taking note of happens next, as the dangers of game jumping are actually established before we even know what going turbo really means. I'm referring to Ralph taking the cherries from Pac-Man. When Ralph takes the cherries, he gets in trouble because you're not supposed to take away something from its original game, but Ralph manages to weasel his way out of this one. So Ralph gets back to his game, only to find out the others took a dunk on him and decided to throw a party while he was away. They even invited people who weren't part of the game, but of course he got no invite. Ralph rightfully gets upset at the disrespect on display. He marches his way up the building and awkwardly interrupts the party. But the Nicelanders, 
these guys. Don't want to let him in, because he's the villain, and he deserves no respect. He'll just wreck the building. This ends up escalating the situation, as Ralph takes things very personally. Ralph claims that he deserves a medal, to the dismay of the Nicelanders. So, they challenge Ralph, saying that only heroes get medals. But Ralph responds back, saying that he could be a hero if he wanted, and bets that he'll get a medal to prove it. At this point, every character has some sort of flawed worldview, believing only heroes can be good, and that medals are what make you great. But of course all this will come back to smack them on the back later. The situation only gets worse when Ralph tries to fix the rigged cake to be in his favor, but in his anger, he kind of accidentally becomes the very thing the Nicelanders believe him to be. A subtle hint towards things to come. The Nicelanders are so certain that they know exactly what kind of a person Ralph is, and that he won't actually be able to get a medal. Ralph, on the other hand, feels worthless and is willing to stake everything on this medal. Ralph discovers a new game where you get a medal just by climbing a tower. So, he tries to just jump in, get a medal, and get out. Meanwhile, the Nicelanders soon realize that they may have underestimated Ralph's dedication when he doesn't show up for the arcade opening. They only begin to realize how vitally important he was as soon as he isn't there anymore. Big oof. Should have thought that metal challenge through a bit more, eh? With their game now at risk, Felix heroically heads out as heroes do. But little does Felix realize, Ralph isn't the only one whose worldview is being challenged. Ralph showcases, with his disastrous attempt at hero's duty, that everyone is made with a purpose, and trying to be something you aren't is probably not going to get you very far. But as soon as he chucks that body armor, Ralph is actually able to make some progress. However, he is still blinded by his desire for the medal, so much so that he doesn't even realize what trouble he is causing in the moment. Also, might I add that Ralph essentially cheated to get this medal, making it not truly the medal of a hero anymore, but Ralph is so caught up in the illusion of grandeur that he doesn't even consider that. So, Ralph and his new cybug buddy end up taking an accidental ride into the Sugar Rush game. Also, speaking of cybugs, they cleverly represent the dangers of greed and trying to be something you aren't with their powers of absorption. Or maybe I'm just looking too deep into their potential purpose. Either way, they make a great world-ending threat. Additionally, the cybugs can only be destroyed by a giant beacon. This may yet again seem like a minor detail, but no, my friend, unless it's a gaming or dessert reference, nothing in this movie is a minor detail. It is always subtly building towards the ultimate climax. Another thing to note is that Ralph knows the beacon can destroy the cybugs because he saw it happen. Why am I telling you to remember this? Well, you'll see. About now is when Ralph at last meets our final main character, Vanellope. Though, he could care less about what she is saying, since the medal is clearly more important, right? But Ralph is still stuck in a game that isn't his own, and his lack of knowledge leads to his downfall into an icing pond. Meanwhile, Vanellope snatches his precious medal. Next up on the docket, King Candy, aka the last great Disney villain. I can't really say much about him now, since all the juicy parts relating to his character come later on, but I can say how perfectly annoying he is in his selfishness. He may seem to be just an unlikable guy, but his selfishness is actually a key detail which subtly hints at future twists in the movie without you even realizing it yet. Also, I might as well mention his hilariously oversized coat box now, and how it represents his ego, since I won't really have much to say about that later scene other than this. On another note, King Candy is the person who's currently in control of this racing game, a game which he wants to be chosen in every race played on it. This is an important yet overlooked hint to his secrets later revealed. Meanwhile, Felix meets up with Calhoun of the Hero's Duty game, who decides to head out and find Ralph in Sugar Rush, but she doesn't want to take Felix with her. This relates to her ultra-traumatic backstory, where her fiancé was killed at her wedding, which is what created her intense hatred of the Cybugs. 
also, Calhoun's fiance is the only time I can remember in a modern Disney movie where they actually showed someone dying on screen, though it is very brief. Calhoun can't stop dwelling on the past. She is afraid to let people help her because she doesn't want them to get hurt. Whereas, if she only puts herself in danger, then no one else can get hurt. However, because she pushes people away, she ends up coming off as cold and jerkish, even though she really does care underneath. But Felix does manage to convince her anyway, so together they head off to find Ralph. Calhoun's arc also ties into the main theme of acceptance this movie has, but in a unique way. More on her later. Well, back to Ralph. He learns from old High and Mighty here that only the winner of the race can get his stolen medal back, once more reinforcing this idea of heroes getting medals. So, Ralph goes searching for someone to win the race for him. But, he finds a bully fest instead, and because Ralph is actually a decent person, despite his flawed worldview, he shoes them off. But he is far from done. He still has business with Miss Thief here. But Vanellope tries to make a deal with Ralph, because all she ever wanted was to be a normal racer like everyone else, but has so far been denied that by the rest of the world. Just because she is different. Because she has a glitch. On another interesting note, Vanellope claims not to have a glitch, but just Pixlexia, which is actually a pretty clever nod to the real-world disability dyslexia, which in some ways is kind of similar to Vanellope's glitch. And many people with real-world dyslexia are often bullied as well, though as we'll see later, this supposed flaw is actually a gift in disguise, subtly sending a positive message to everyone who can relate to Vanellope's conditions. Anywho, Ralph is upset at all these extra steps he has to take to get his medal back, and decides to blow out his anger on a jawbreaker. And hey, if you're enjoying the video so far, I wouldn't mind if you smashed the like button as hard as Ralph smashed that jawbreaker. Meanwhile, Felix reveals how ignorant he has been to Ralph's feelings this whole time by explaining that he doesn't understand why Ralph would do such a thing as going turbo. Calhoun in return wonders what going turbo exactly is supposed to mean. So, Felix at last explains the infamous tale of the game jumper. Turbo became a villain because he was selfish and wanted more in life rather than learning to be content and accept his place. And Felix is afraid Ralph might just become like Turbo, and he isn't too far off from the truth. More on Turbo later, of course. Unfortunately, Felix and Calhoun accidentally make the same mistake Ralph did when he first entered Sugar Rush, but with no easy way out this time. Calhoun uses her quick thinking and careful planning to determine the situation, but she currently has no plan of escape. Felix, on the other hand, panics and needs to be calmed down by Calhoun. But, in return, he comes up with an out-of-the-box plan, which only he could be able to pull off because of his hammer. Together, they end up using their unique talents to escape the pit, showing just how well they work as a team and how they can improve each other as people. But enough with the goo-goo eyes. Back to Ralph. So, Ralph and Vanellope head over to make a new car to replace the, uh, unfortunate incident of a car that she previously had. Unfortunately, things don't end up going so well when Ralph tries to help out and make the new car. But, in a surprise to be sure, but a welcome one, Vanellope loves it! This is the first time Ralph has ever been thanked or praised for his work, something he thought could only be a bad thing. He never realized the value his unique skills actually had until this point. But old Doofus Head shows up, and unfortunately they have to make a quick getaway. Off to the secret bonus level it is! Oh, and by the way, I like that Vanellope actually has a greater knowledge of the game world than even King Candy does. Yet another subtle hint at the upcoming twists. Inside the mountain, Ralph once more vents his frustration when Vanellope reveals she can't actually drive. But, she assures him that there is still a chance. She can feel it in her code. Hmm, seems like it might be another hint. Vanellope has already started to grow attached to Ralph after all that has happened. Him saving her from the bullies and helping her make a new car. All this being more than anyone else has ever done for her before. But Ralph is a bit more hesitant. He believes if it weren't for Vanellope, he would be being praised as a hero already. Though he too starts to see her as a friend after helping her learn to drive. 
The bond between Ralph and Vanellope works so well because, despite being video game characters, they feel like genuine people who have a rocky but realistic friendship. They may be very different, but their personalities just mix perfectly, and they know they need each other, as each one was worse off before they met. They both also share similar misconceptions of the world and their place in it, both believing themselves to be outcasts who have to prove their worth, when in reality, both are one of their respective game's most important elements. While all this is happening, Felix makes his biggest mistake yet, complimenting a woman. This causes Calhoun to boot him from her ship, since she is still not ready to move on and is too afraid to lose Felix. And though it makes her seem jerkish, she really secretly cares about him, and it was actually her feelings for him that caused her to abandon him. Felix is heartbroken, not even realizing that now he feels the same way Ralph did at the beginning of the film. Ah, now we reach what is probably the most iconic and important part of the whole movie. I'm sure you all know exactly what I'm talking about. Ralph's betrayal. But just before all that, Vanellope, realizing she has found a true friend in Ralph, something even more valuable than winning the race, makes a special candy medal for Ralph. Unfortunately, while she was doing that, King Candy stops on by to pull out quite possibly the cleverest villain manipulation scene in any Disney animated movie. Uh, but first, my favorite scene in the movie. <laughs> you wouldn't hit a guy with glasses, would you? <laughs> you hit a guy with glasses. <laughs> well played. Anyway, King Candy has with him Ralph's long lost medal, offering it in return for nothing but advice. Ralph is hesitant to trust him, and for good reason. But King Candy is sly. He uses special weapons called facts, logic, and half-truths to trick Ralph. You see, what makes this scene so brilliant is that King Candy is right. Everything he said is a genuinely possible outcome, an outcome which could spell doom for Vanellope. Ralph, now filled with fear, decides to do what he thinks is best for Vanellope and her game. When Vanellope returns, she gives Ralph the medal she made, and Ralph looks at it and thinks about what he's going to do, and how he doesn't deserve such a gift. Inevitably, Ralph reveals his intentions and pins Vanellope up so that she can't stop him. And in this moment, Ralph becomes the very thing he always thought he was, the one thing Vanellope never saw in him, the villain. And now, even Vanellope believes that is what he truly is. Her hopes crushed forever, Ralph leaves with the illusion that this is for the better. <laughs> but hey, at least he's got his medal, am I right? Because <laughs> that's what's really important. Right? But when Ralph finally returns to his game to claim his reward, there is no one left. His choice to abandon his role as a villain has caused the game to be set for unplugging. The last remaining Nicelander keeps his promise and gives Ralph everything he said he wanted before leaving himself. But what Ralph thought he wanted was not actually what he needed all along. Ralph at last realizes that getting a medal isn't really what he wanted, nor has it made him happy, but rather what he had, a friend in Vanellope, that was when he truly felt complete. The medal wasn't even earned fairly, and it only caused him and everyone else trouble wherever he went searching for it. But the friendship he had with Vanellope, he earned just by being himself. Ralph tosses the medal, and with it, his false worldview. And when he does so, he finally sees the truth. Literally. Vanellope is a part of her game. King Candy was wrong. And that means she isn't really a glitch. She is an equally valid part of her world and deserves to be given a chance just like everyone else. Seeing this, Ralph realizes that it isn't too late to save the one thing that truly gave his life meaning, his friend, and make it up. Ralph rushes back to Sugar Rush, finding Sour Bill and interrogating him to find the truth. After some convincing, Sour Bill reveals what he knows, and that the rest can be learned if Vanellope crosses the finish line and restores herself to the game. Also, another quick note, Sour Bill briefly mentions that the game will reset when Vanellope crosses the finish line. This is surprisingly important, actually, so keep it in mind for later. Ralph then literally tries to fix the damage he has done, but he only knows one person who can actually do that. Of course, I'm talking about Felix, who has unfortunately found himself in a precarious position. While trying to escape King Candy's fungin, Felix realizes another truth, 
that there are many things Ralph can do that he can't, like wreck things. When Ralph shows up, Felix complains about being rejected, everything going wrong, and that he wasn't respected by anyone, only for Ralph to then explain that that is exactly how he felt all his life. Felix then realizes that he's misjudged Ralph, and this whole mess is partly his fault by not respecting him or considering his feelings when he should have. So he decides to make it up by helping Ralph fix his mistake by putting Vanellope's cart back together. Ralph then frees Vanellope and apologizes, admitting his misguided mistake. But thankfully, Vanellope is forgiving, and Ralph reveals that there is still a chance for her. She can be restored to who she should be by crossing the finish line of the race. With all bonds restored, Ralph sets up Vanellope to finally complete her dreams. But little does everyone know, the Cybugs are festering, ready to consume. The race goes pretty well with Vanellope, but King Candy is not having any of it, and he at last shows his true colors. He will do anything to put himself on top. Sharing the spotlight is his worst fear. In the process, though, he accidentally reveals that he is in fact a hypocrite. And also Turbo, I guess. Okay, one sec, let me elaborate. What I mean is that King Candy has always hated Vanellope and talked down to her supposedly because she was glitched. But in reality, so is King Candy, as we see him glitch into his true self, Turbo. So, King Candy's hatred of glitches is a facade made up just to pick on someone who stands out from the rest, when in reality, he is no different from her. Oh, well, I mean, he's much eviler, but you get my point, right? The twist that King Candy is in fact Turbo actually works, unlike most of the many unsuccessful Disney twist villains to come after him. The main reasons why this twist works and others like, say, Hans don't are, one, because the plot doesn't rely on the twist. Whether King Candy is Turbo or not, the plot still makes sense. Two, the twist itself actually makes sense, as in, many Disney twist villains just suddenly come out of nowhere and with seemingly all new personalities, but King Candy is consistent, and his motives are not only unchanged, but lined up perfectly with what we know about Turbo. And three, it adds to the world and characters, unlike other twists, which only really exist for shock value. King Candy being Turbo makes both characters retroactively more interesting and engaging, as now the main villain has a backstory, and Turbo isn't just that guy from the backstory. Everything comes full circle, making the plot feel more complete, the sign of a true masterpiece. Anyway, enough of King Candy, the climax has only just begun. Vanellope escapes using the very ability people taunted her for in the past, and gets this close to becoming a part of the code again. But, unfortunately, Calhoun and the Cybugs return. Well, I mean, it's a good thing that Calhoun is here, but uh, not the Cybugs. Everyone makes a break for it, but Vanellope can't leave because she was cut off from finishing the race before she could be restored. Ralph tries to help her, but he can't force her out. But hey, when did a wall ever stop Ralph? Okay, actually this one does. But that still doesn't stop him, as he finds another way, using his unique mix of knowledge, being reminded of the beacon by Calhoun, and the soda mountain which he knows can explode like a beacon, he rushes to save Vanellope, and furthermore, all of Sugar Rush. Also, King Candy briefly reappears for a boss fight, and honestly, not much to say here, other than I guess it adds tension? Is it weird to say this boss fight here might be the weakest scene in the movie? Not because it's bad, just because it might be the only thing that doesn't really add to the plot, themes, or characters in any way. But that's besides the point. Ralph finally knows what really matters, his friends, and he is willing to sacrifice his life for them. He finally embraces his role and gifts as the villain, realizing that what the villains from the beginning said was right all along. As he falls, possibly to his death, he recites what those same villains said at the beginning of the movie about the value of their roles. Getting a medal is never what made anybody a hero. But at this moment, Ralph finally does become a hero, but only when he at last accepts that he is the villain, poetically tying up his story arc. See? I told you that first villain scene would be important. But Vanellope won't just sit there as Ralph commits heroic suicide, so she rushes out to save him, and if it weren't for her special gift, which she had looked down upon for so long, she wouldn't have been able to save him. With the Cybugs destroyed, and King Candy as well, Vanellope can finally cross the fixed finish line and reset the game, restoring herself. 
All the damage being undone may seem like a convenient way to have everything fixed right before the ending, since the game needs to function when the arcade opens or else it'll get unplugged. But, Sour Bill actually said this exact thing would happen earlier. Like I've been saying, nothing in this movie is pointless or unimportant, even the seemingly small details. At this moment, Vanellope is revealed to actually be the Princess of Sugar Rush, but she quickly abandons that title. She has learned, and so has Ralph, that pretending to be something you're not is a mistake. All she needed was a chance to show who she really is, and crossing that finish line finally brought her to everyone's view. Furthermore, Vanellope being trapped in Sugar Rush until this moment could be seen as her feeling useless in the greater world, but when she finally realizes her value and stops looking at her glitch as a mistake that needs to be fixed, that is when she is finally free, when she can finally take her place in the greater world. She also forgives all the people who bullied her, proving that despite her rough exterior, she is actually nice, though she does have a quick laugh first. Executed. What? And Calhoun at last realizes that she doesn't want to leave Felix. She is happier with him, finally overcoming her past and accepting it for what it is. At last, we reach the true ending of the movie, where the main theme of acceptance ties into all the character arcs and endings. Firstly with Ralph as he of course learns that his role is equally important and valid as anyone else's and that he doesn't need to change himself or prove some point to fit in. Ralph learns that accepting his role and letting go of jealousy is actually what makes him the happiest and most content. And when the Nice Landers and Felix realize this as well, they too are happier, not having to live in fear of a man who never actually intended them harm. Ralph even takes his new and improved worldview and uses it to help other abandoned game characters. Felix and the Nice Landers learn to see the value of Ralph and his position as a villain, though it takes viewing a world without him and seeing things through his eyes to finally get it. Vanellope learns to accept who she is as a person, and to not let the world tell you who to be or change yourself to try and fit in with what it wants you to be. Earlier in the movie, Ralph, still in his flawed worldview, tells Vanellope that people love a winner, and that is why she'll be loved in the end. Though Vanellope is loved in the end, it is because of who she is, not because she is a winner. And Calhoun learns to accept her past and move on, or else she will never be able to retain any relationships or ever be able to love anyone ever again, even though deep inside that is what she truly needs. All of them are challenged in their worldviews until they eventually realize they were wrong and change for the better, unlike King Candy who shut people out and tried to take all the attention for himself, never learning to accept his place because of jealousy. Every plot thread and character in this movie is so intricately tied together, and the writers made sure to fill in every single plot hole, as well as cleverly, but not too obviously, hint and foreshadow the events yet to come. Quite possibly the most beautiful part of the ending isn't when Ralph is finally accepted by Felix and the Nicelanders, or even when he gets to see Vanellope. It is actually when Ralph learns to love the very thing he thought he hated most. No, not being thrown off the roof. I'm referring to him learning to love and accept himself for who he is. There is no one else in the world who can do what he can do, and that is because there's no one else in the whole world just like him. And that, my friends, is why Disney's Wreck-It Ralph is an impeccably and perfectly written modern masterpiece of a movie. A very big thank you to everyone who made it to the end of this analysis, and if you haven't already, I would love it if you subscribed and why not leave a like while you're at it? And also be sure to tell me in the comments down below what you think of Wreck-It Ralph. Love it? Hate it? All opinions are welcome, so be sure to share. Oh, and another thing to share would be the video! We need to inform the rest of the world how great this movie is. And, most importantly of all, stay iconic.